tries anyway. <laughs> All right. Hi everybody, Donovan Ash here from the Elevation Real Estate Group and I'm joined by Tyler Schachter once again. Yeah, everyone, great to be here. And uh, today we just wanted to give you a overview of what we're seeing in the market in real time, as well as what the statistics have been reflecting from last month uh, being the end of April as we now move into May. So Tyler, take it away. Yeah, you've probably seen some of the headlines. It's been, it's been a ridiculously crazy market like we've never seen before, mm -hmm. which is most surprising in the midst of a pandemic and recovery here that is just starting to become underway. Um, so yeah, we wanna just give you a little bit of real-time facts on what we're seeing on the ground here uh, so you can make sense of some of those headlines. Mm -hmm. So April marked a bit of a shift in the market uh, from what we've seen this year. The first, I guess, first month of the year where we're starting to see inventory build a little bit and we're seeing fewer multiple offers on each property and fewer subject free offers that have kind of become the norm for winning uh, the bid on a property when you, I mean, against high competition here. Hmm. And the resulting effect of that is we're seeing overpriced homes and homes that maybe aren't showing their best if they need updates and repairs, they're sitting on the market. Their offer date, they plan to review offers on a Monday or Tuesday, it comes and goes and there are no offers, which of course is opening up an opportunity for savvy buyers to potentially negotiate and maybe not pay over asking price on certain homes. So it's kind of a refreshing trend that we hope continues as this market stabilizes and inventory continues to build. Yeah, and, and as we've seen that, um, one of those factors that Tyler mentioned was the inventory building. Um, and we saw the highest level of new listings recorded in March, and then a close second in April with sales tapering off in April and dropping about 9%. So that added a bit of inventory to the market, which was fantastic. Um, that being said, we feel that in the, the, the detached home category, at least in Langley and, and the Fraser Valley, it seems to have peaked. Uh, we did not see uh, a price increase uh, from last month to this month um, in terms of sale prices. And we didn't necessarily see a massive increase in number of sales or new listings. So it seems like that market has started to stabilize. Townhomes, we can't say the same um, as townhomes are still extremely hot, still many multiple offer situations and prices are still increasing in the townhome sector. As far as condos and apartments go, uh, we haven't seen them take off uh, into like a multiple offer frenzy as much um, as we have with townhomes. However, their time may be coming as townhomes become less and less affordable because what happens is as the detached home prices rise, some buyers get pushed out of a detached home into a townhouse and then that will eventually flow down to condos theoretically. So uh, keep your eyes out for that. If you are someone that has been in a townhouse and you're looking to make that shift into a detached home, now may be a really opportunistic time because townhomes are still on the rise, still a very strong market as the detached home is starting to level off. So there may be an opportunity there for you. Yeah, and as we see more signs of the market shifting and stabilizing from what we had been witnessing over January, February, March, mm -hmm. um, it's now more than ever, it's crucial to have a pricing strategy that fits the current market conditions. So there was a season there where almost every listing that comes on was underpriced to generate a massive frenzy, multiple offers, way over asking price, subject free. And it was working as much as the buyers and the buyer's agents didn't love it. It worked for the sellers to get the highest and best price. Now you have to be really careful about the strategy you choose because if that multiple offer day comes and goes without offers, you're back to square one and that can really set you back on your eventual sale price. So that involves an in-depth market analysis about what you have to sell, how much uh, attraction we expect it to generate, how much interest we expect, and then choosing a strategy, strategy that's comfortable for you with your tolerance for risk. So we're weighing that individually with every property and every property owner right now to see what is a best fit for them. Um, you don't want to necessarily be overpriced. You don't want to necessarily be underpriced. You want to be right priced heading into this market shift. Yeah, and we want to clarify just at the end here, we don't necessarily see a correction coming in the market, which would indicate downward pressure on pricing or anything like that or an oversupply building. Uh, what we've mentioned today is simply 
a stabilization or a start of a stabilization. We could still see some fluctuation up and down. Um, we could see it kind of steady off here for the next little while. So uh, don't hear market crash, uh, but here stabilization and, and that will hopefully um, allow for a more predictable market for buyers as uh, they're looking for homes. If you do need help and you're looking for uh, some expert advice on pricing your home, listing your home, how to market your home, or on the buying end, how to navigate this challenging market, feel free to reach out to us anytime. Yeah, we're happy to help.